E aí, galera? Estamos começando mais um Positivamente. E esse é um conteúdo extra, um conteúdo especial. Você está no Entre Temporadas do Positivamente. Então, é um ótimo aquecimento para você ir aprendendo, recebendo do Senhor para a terceira temporada que vem aí e que está sensacional. E, gente, hoje o conteúdo é diferente. Eu estou aqui com uma pessoa e ela não fala português. <risos> Isso mesmo, nosso conteúdo será em inglês, será gravado em inglês, mas a legenda estará aí. Então, para você que não entende inglês, você poderá ler, fica super à vontade. A gente pensou em você e esse conteúdo é exclusivo do nosso canal aqui do YouTube. Ele não estará disponível nas plataformas como Spotify e Deezer, por ser inglês. Então, vai estar disponível somente aqui. Então, assim, compartilha com seus amigos que entendem, que não entendem, porque todo mundo vai conseguir ouvir, tá bom? Então, agora vamos mudar a língua, tá bom? Espera só um momentinho aí. Hey guys, <laughs> I'm so glad to be here with you. Uh, we have here today David Gava. He's a missionary from God, and I'm so glad. And I hope uh, uh, people can receive what God is giving to you. And um, I'm praying to talk uh, in, an English good <laughs> and a good English that you can understand and people uh, can understand as well. So be welcome here. We are really happy to have you here. Cool. It's such an honor and a joy, I mean, to be here and thank you for the amazing privilege that we can do this together. Yeah, yeah. thank you. You're welcome. Uh, Gava, I, uh, let's... let's uh, Let's start telling people uh, where did you that did we met? Uh, we met actually a year ago, or uh, in September yeah. last year at uh, the Dunamis Farm, yeah. where I was speaking on a discipleship training school with a ministry called uh, Dunamis and also Fine Fragrance. Yeah, yeah. It was crazy because uh, I went there uh, with Junia, and when I came there, uh, the Dunamis Farm, if you don't know where it is, is in the countryside of Sao Paulo. And they have like uh, a school there to, of ministry. And it's so nice. And we went there and, and the people said, oh, David Gav is here. David Gav is here. He's a missionary. And I was like, oh, that's nice. And then when we were in the middle of the class and we started to pray, I, I felt in my heart that I should ask G Gava if, if he could uh, pray for me for my life but uh, we we used to question the Holy Spirit and I was like no baby not no no I'm not I don't I don't I don't want to bother him so I was like no 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 but in the, the same minute a girl came to me and she said Jess uh, he wants to pray for you and for your friends I was like what I was like, no, God, woo! I was like, I, I was just thinking about this. And um, it was amazing. He prayed for us, for me, for, for Bruna Hamu. We have a, spe a special podcast called uh, Daughter of Easter. Wow. And uh, Bruna Hamu, yes. my friend she wa that was with me in the farm, uh, she, she does with me. Oh, wow. Yeah. Cool. Uh, oh. She's a co-host, yeah. Okay. And uh, we were there, me, Bruna, and Bruna Burin, a huge friend of mine too. And he prayed for us and it was powerful. It was really nice. God uh, uh, talked with us like uh, in a way, in a different way. It was really, really nice. We got so blessed with uh, his his words. Thank and uh, and, and that, that's the way that we met. And after he came back to his country, and now we are here. So I'm so happy. And I, I wanted to tell people to for them to understand uh, where did, did we met. But uh, Gava, uh, let's start uh, to telling people what do you do um, in your country? You are a missionary. I think uh, uh, people, they, they have a lot of doubts. Doubts? Um, doubt, <laughs> galera, me ajuda aí, né? Uh, doubt, uh, what uh, uh, a missionary does? Like, uh, uh, how is your life? You travel a lot, you preach. What do you do? <laughs> well, no, thank you for asking that question. And I've been a missionary for uh, 23 years. 
and it's something that I I love. I'm very passionate about, and also something I believe it's a calling uh, that God um, gave me. And besides just traveling, my heart is to see people come into the knowledge uh, of who Jesus Christ is, and so that when they come into that knowledge and that relationship and that intimacy with Jesus, they get to uh, have purpose, life, and vision for their lives, and that God would use them in different spheres of society Mm -hmm. according to what God has put in them. Oh, nice. Yeah. Oh, nice. That's crazy. But you, you always have been in the ministry. Uh, tell me a little bit of your history. Okay. I was born in a country called Zimbabwe. And in 1976, my father was from Germany and my mother was uh, from Zimbabwe. That's crazy. And <laughs> so I came from a cross-racial marriage, which was very unacceptable in those days. Oh, and I so... Imagine. So the first two years after I was born, I was like, you know, hidden uh, in a house for two years because of the cross-racial marriage. And long story short, my life is very maybe unique and special (laughs) in the way that God has walked with me uh, over the years. And when I say that, um, you know, at the age of two years old, I really got sick and... They took me to the doctors and I had an operation. Long story short, the doctors came back to my mother and said, your son did not make it uh, through the operation. (gasps) Basically, what the doctors were saying to my mother was your son died uh, through the operation. So they did everything to resuscitate the child, but the child was not able to get up for an hour or two and they'd already written all their documents. Wow. And so by the grace of God, I'm here in your studio um, because mom was a woman of prayer and she asked the doctors if she, I could come in, she could come into the operation room and the child was already um, uh, on the operation table and passed out, no, no, passed away. And she prayed and prayed and said, God, if you would give me this child back, I'll dedicate this child uh, for your purposes. And and that's how God redeemed my life and raised me from the dead. And from from a very young age, I knew there was a calling of God upon my life, but I did not know what that calling was going to be. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. It's amazing. Thank you. Oh, my God. Yeah. I didn't know. Yeah. <laughs> but, but at the same time, you know, you, you still grow up so... Being able to speak to you like the way I'm doing right now, for the first 21 years of my life, I was not able to speak. It used to take me three to four minutes to be able to say one sentence. I had a speech impediment. And so can you imagine being shy, low self-esteem, insecurities, identity crisis, and I used to pray and say, God, you can call me to do anything in life, but never call me to do anything with public speaking <laughs> because I had a speech impediment. And so um, God healed me on the 10th of April, 1998, uh, yeah, in, in Zimbabwe during a discipleship training school. Oh, my God. God is amazing. Come on now. You yeah. said... Only this, and yes. it's exactly where he wants uh, to use you. Definitely, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. That's and I mean, it's 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 been an amazing journey. But before I came into ministry, you know, I was into uh, I used to play soccer professionally. Really, and I, I was also yes, yeah. I played soccer professionally from the age of sixteen years old, and and also yeah, I was in university you know, studying systems analysis and computer designing. Mm -hmm. And I also had a fashion business at the age of 18. And then God called me into, yeah, into full-time ministry. Was it easy to obey the call? No. 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 I, I, I wrestled. I struggled. I was like, and my mother was like, no, David, you can't do this. But long story short, I had to, yeah, obey the calling of God that was upon my life, and I don't regret obeying it. 
Oh, that's nice. Uh, uh, what is what was your age when you felt this calling of God, like a hundred percent of your life? I knew the hand of God was upon my life from a very young age. Mm -hmm. From a very young age, I knew the hand of God. Yeah. But being not able to speak, I disqualified myself from ministry. Yeah, yeah. Because you can't say anything to anyone. So why who would want to listen to you mm -hmm. if you take three to four minutes? of trying to explain yourself. So I think my through my insecurities, I disqualified myself. Yeah, for sure. And then I realized that God was not looking for my potential, but he was looking for my availability. Wow, mm -hmm. that's nice. Mm -hmm. But uh, yeah, uh, we used to say this here. Yeah. Uh, God wants to use you, mm -hmm. but you have to be ab you have to be available. Definitely, yes, yeah. I agree with like that. Like a heart of, heart of serve, mm -hmm. in, right? But what was your what what was your age in this time? Like uh, when you really said, "Okay, God, I'm going to give you everything, and I'm going to um, uh, uh, let myself be used." Let myself be used, like this, yeah. Challenge. Yeah, I, I'm gonna I'm gonna challenge myself. What 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 time was? This know? was in January uh, when I was January 1998 when I was 20 years old. 20 years old. And oh, nice. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, did you you study fashion, right? I I grew up in a f in a family of fashion, so when you can you can see yeah by his. <laughs> Look. <laughs> no. So I grew up in a family of fashion. My mother was a designer since she was a young lady. And so she had a own designing uh, company. And so with that, you know, imagine when you come from school, before you have lunch, the first thing you are doing on the floor is you're cutting patterns. <laughs> and so that, that was my upbringing. So mom was fashion. And of course, when you grow up in a family of fashion, it, you gradually also begin to have that interest uh -huh. but when i was at 18 years old i began to yeah you know go into the whole area of fashion i did a bit of modeling between the age of 18 and 19 and then god just directed me more to start a business with a friend and it was very fruitful until the lord call, called me to ministry and then i had to yeah close the business oh yeah oh yeah. nice but but uh you were telling us uh, God can use the fashion. Yeah. He can use everything like uh, uh, connected to art, right? Yeah, we definitely. Can, yeah. You know, God is a very artistic God. God yeah. is a very creative God. Yeah. He's a, one of the things I always say to people is God is a fashion designer. <laughs> you know, because look at, how he, nice look at how he designed the earth and everything in it. Even when you look at the, uh, the life of Adam, when Adam sinned, God had to design an outfit for Adam and Eve. Yes. So God has been in the fashion business since the beginning of creation. And so sometimes as Christians, when we think of fashion, we think it's something evil. But God is, is, God is the one who started with fashion. You know, you look at... Um, People think being prophetic is only giving out words of knowledge. That's one part of the prophetic. But the prophetic is, you know, people who are called into, you know, fashion industry, um, you know, graphic designers, you know, architect and architectures. Those are all into designing, and God is a designer. Wow, yeah. God is a fashion designer. Yeah, that's I love right. That. I love yeah. that. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah, it, it connects with me, if mm -hmm. with my history, mm -hmm. because I used to think that uh, art was not from God, mm -hmm. because I used to hear that, mm -hmm. and uh, today I know that it's he is the art. He is the the biggest artist. Come on. I yeah, agree. right. Definitely. Because we created us. He created the universe. Mm -hmm. He created everything. So he is a, he is more uh, he's creative. He is he's he loves arts. He loves communication. Definitely. He loves fashion. He loves everything because he we are his creation, right? That's so right. Yeah. I think um uh, that we, we had this connection to a lot of being a lot of people a lot of uh, people in the ministry uh, uh, appreciate to the beauty of this yes right of um, arts of yes. fashion of a lot of things and, and we need to tell people about it because there is some taboo taboo 
it, there is some taboo about it mm -hmm. because if you are Christian, you are you cannot be uh, a fashion designer. Mm -hmm. Like, come on, yeah. come on, we yeah. need to talk about it, right? Yeah. And yeah. uh, uh, tell me the the beginning of your ministry. How was it? Um, did you know already was God wanted, or you you spend time like uh, uh, trying to figure it out? Because I think our generation, we um, one of our uh, fears and doubts is like what God wants me to do. Uh, <laughs> and how did you discover that? You know. I I really agree with what you're saying. It's like, you know, was it easy? Did it happen just like that or did it take time? Yeah. For me, it took time because your calling is always connected to your identity. Good. So your calling is a byproduct of your identity. When you know who you are, you know what to do. For me, I did not know what to do because I had a lot of um, identity crisis. So what God did in my life was heal my identity. When he healed my identity, then he gave me the purpose. Wow. Because purpose comes out of your identity. What you do in life is always connected to your identity. So when I, discover, when I, when, when I discovered who I was in Jesus, then Jesus gave me the purpose. Wow, that did it take time? Yes, it surely did time. Because can you imagine 21 years of your life with identity crisis, shame, fear, so many unbelief and doubt? It didn't happen overnight, but it was a process, but it was a very fruitful process. Yeah. And how was this process? Uh, what did you do to, to, to be healed by God and to discover because if i uh we talk a lot about process yes and uh, but we need to be intentional in the process definitely i think many people wants um you know like an immediate breakthrough uh, yeah no one wants a process i believe in miracles but i also believe in a process yes and the process for everyone is very different yeah if the lord might work in your pro in your life with a maybe a two-year process, but that doesn't become a standard for everyone else. Mm -hmm. And so my encouragement for me I mean, to everyone is my process was a process where God had removed all the lies I believed about myself. Mm -hmm. Because you, you, as a human being, you don't become what you eat. You become what you think. As a person thinks, he or she becomes. And so God had to remove all the lies about my identity, what people have said about me. And the process was going to be longer depending how longer I wanted it to be. Mm -hmm. It can be shorter depending how you want to go through the process. Mm -hmm. And I've met people who say, honestly, I was born like this. I will never want to change. <laughs> this is who I am and I'm going to stay like this. It makes the process longer versus I was born like this, but I know that it might be hard. It might be painful, but I'm willing to go through the process no matter whatever it's going to cost. I think with that attitude quickens the process of healing yeah. and, and also deliverance. And how long was your process? My, my, my process, to be honest with you, was a six months process. Six months? Six months. Wow, fast. <laughs> Why? Because honestly, I realized 21 years of my life mm -hmm. was a life of shame, pain. Mm -hmm. And I said I didn't want the next 21 years of my life to be the same. So I said, God, whatever you want to do, I give you permission. Mm -hmm. And when you give someone permission, you know, that person can do good or can do the opposite. But God is a good, good father. Yeah. And when we ask him, he always gives us gifts things. So my process was six months from not being able to speak, being afraid of people, so insecure, no boldness to come to a place of walking in boldness in authority was a six month process. Wow. Yeah. And and this is not a standard for mm -hmm. everyone. Yeah. It's sure. a process that every one of us uh, can go through depending 
uh, also we want to go through the journey and mm. uh, uh, as you were saying mm -hmm. i was thinking you made a decision yes uh so it starts in you mm -hmm. uh sometimes you are you have a lot of these lies in your head in a f in fears and you you need to stop and think and and give everything to god and say okay here i am and transform me like uh, change me yes. and uh, but you need to this to decide right yeah. you decide it no, so definitely. we need to decide mm -hmm. it, it's our responsibility definitely it's not everyone else it, not anyone else it's our responsibility right yeah, definitely i think when we take ownership i can hope for change i can desire change I can want change. Those things are all great. But if I don't put action to it, yeah. nothing changes. Yeah. And I think we live in a generation where we have grown up with instant noodles, yeah. instant coffee. Everything is so instant. Yeah. But it, the journey of transformation is not instant. It's a process. Wow. Even when you look at the Israelites when they came out of Egypt, it took one day for God to take them out of Egypt. But it took 40 years yes. to take Egypt out of them. Yeah. Because their journey from Egypt to um to the promised land was an 11-day journey. Yeah. But it took 40 years to cover an 11-day journey yeah. because of the process that they took longer. What is the best advice you can give for our audience that uh, it's going through this process and uh, wants to be used by God but don't know how and don't believe? What you can give? What can you say for them to encourage them to decide as you decide? And now you are living the best of your of God of your life. Thank you. My encouragement to everyone who is watching is. Regardless of whoever you are, the family you were born in, whether rich or not rich, regardless of anything that has happened to your life, whether you were wounded, you were used, you were abused, you were rejected, no matter your background of your education, I always believe there is always a hope for everyone. Yes. And when you look at my life where God brought me from, I always say to people, When you look at my life, if God could do it through someone like me, he took me from the bush bush of Africa, there is actually potential for everyone to be redeemed, to be restored, because you were created for a reason and for a purpose. And the enemy will try to come steal, kill, and destroy that purpose that you were created. But God is a God of redemption when you read the bible you look at mary magdalena you know she was a woman with seven demons but god redeemed her you look at the samaritan woman she had lived a life of one relationship to another god redeemed her you look at zacchaeus you know such a short guy no one saw value in him god redeemed him you look at the woman who had the issue of blood her identity the bible never says anything about her name but her issue became her identity. Can you imagine the pain, the shame, the rejection yeah. that she went through for 12 years that no one could sit next to her, no one would want to associate with her, but God met her in her brokenness, in her shame, and God redeemed her. So God is a God that redeems us regardless of the brokenness and the pain we have gone through. Wow. Mm -hmm. Amen. <laughs> so yeah. powerful. Oh, thank you. Oh, God. Yeah. And uh, tell me about uh, now, a days, what you do, your ministry. Yeah. Like, uh, how how is your life today? You know, I mean, with our ministry, I'm not one who is, who desires to publicize ourselves or market ourselves. But my heart is to see God raise a generation that is prophetic, a prophetic generation a generation that knows their identity and knows their purpose. Because I believe we are a prophetic generation, Amen. but the enemy has tried to destroy our identity. By so destroying our identity, 
we don't become a voice. And yet God has created us to be a voice in spheres of society. Yeah. He has created us to be, I mean, world changers in all these spheres. And my heart is to see sons and daughters of God, regardless of however they, however they are, and regardless of their brokenness, whether they struggle with their identity, sexual identity, body image, that God would take them. Because God meets you the way you are but he never leaves you the way you are. Wow. He meets you the way you are and he refines you, he redeems you, and he gives you a hope and a vision and a purpose so that what you can be a voice. But the enemy always wants to destroy the voice you have because when you don't have a voice, you cannot express yourself like I did for 21 years. Mm -hmm. But when he gave me a voice, I began to be a voice to the nations. Wow. And that's what I believe God desires to do. And that's the heart of our ministry. Wow. And uh, you said about the prophetic. Yes. Uh, I was thinking, and I, I think uh, a lot of people, uh, we have uh, uh, these questions. What is, what is the difference between prophetic and the revelation? Uh, something prophetic or some revelation? Can you explain this to me, Gabba? Y you know, um, The prophetic is actually revelation that comes from the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. And it's God that gives us, uh, you know, be words of encouragement, words of edification. Mm -hmm. You know, because the heart of the prophetic is to reveal the heart of the Father to people. Yes. That is the heart of the prophetic, is to reveal the, the love, the heart of the Father to the people. Mm -hmm. The prophetic, it's not to judge anyone. It's not to use anyone. The prophetic is not for financial gains, but the prophetic is this is how God sees you. When you look at the guy, you know, um, uh, in the book of Judges, Gideon, when the angel of the Lord came to Gideon, Gideon was so fearful. He was hiding. But the angel came with a prophetic word and said, you are a mighty man of valor. God always speaks to the potential that is within us. Wow. He never condemns his children. He never discourages his children. When the prophetic is abused, that's when people are hurt. But when the prophetic is done with a heart of love, compassion, it restores dignity and it restores identity and it gives people um, you know, a purpose for life. And um, how uh we grow in, into the prophetic uh what is the keys that you can give for us um for our audience and for me okay <laughs> thank you for asking it's, it's, i'm asking because everyone wants to use by god mm -hmm. everyone wants to hear yeah. the voice of god and be a voice to to yeah. someone okay. so that's why i'm asking because i think it's going to be a very powerful key Okay, the Bible says, earnestly desire spiritual gifts. 1 Corinthians chapter yeah. 14, verse 1 to 4. Earnestly desire, and especially the gift of prophecy. Yes, the, the Bible said, it, yeah. Earnestly desire. So when you desire something, we also need to understand the purpose. Why am I desiring this gift? The desire for the gift is to be a blessing unto others. Yeah to be a blessing, to encourage, to affirm, and to edify people. Yes. So basically, the gift has been given to build up people, yeah. to encourage people, and that is the purpose. So your question is, how can we grow? Yeah. John 10, 27 says, my sheep hear my voice. And, and um, Acts 2 Verse 17 says, you know, my sons and daughters, they shall prophesy. So every Christian is prophetic. Amen. Every was, Christian is prophetic. Yeah. Why? Because you have the Holy Spirit in you yeah. and that spirit speaks to you. So everyone is prophetic. Whether we use it or not, mm -hmm. it's actually up to us. Mm -hmm. So God has created us to be a voice. So to be a voice, you need to be able to speak what the Father is putting on your heart. Mm -hmm. So how do we grow in the prophetic? The prophetic is a byproduct of intimacy, relationship with Jesus. So it's the overflow of intimacy. But you can also desire the gift 
by asking the Holy Spirit to grow you in the gifting. And how do you grow in the gift? You exercise the gift. The prophetic, it's like a muscle. Mm -hmm. The more you go to the gym and you know, lift up in the gym, the more your muscles grow. So how do your muscles grow in the prophetic? You find opportunities to love people, serve people, encourage people, and build up people. That, is, that was the heart of Jesus. And Jesus is the spirit of prophecy. And he wants to minister to us and also through us from a place of intimate relationship with him. Wow, that's mm -hmm. that's awesome to hear. Thank you. And um, um, I'm thinking here, um, I forgot what I was going to say <laughs> about. Um, oh yeah, uh, you, but also Gava, you need to take risks, right? Yes. To grow, uh, because we we got so you used to to get so afraid oh i'm not good I'm, I, sometimes you feel in your heart yeah. you feel the holy spirit telling you like go there and tell yeah. this guy ba 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 yeah. and you know no no it's something from my head yeah. it's no 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 and god like is, is telling in your heart and we used to to fight with the voice of the holy spirit True that and uh, i think one of the keys it, it, you need to take risks definitely right? but and um but uh, uh, i think uh, the um, the the most uh, difficult like uh, is 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 like the, our our fear is maybe it's it's wrong that's right uh, you know uh, we have uh, this fear mm -hmm. I, i don't want to say something to to him mm -hmm. that it's from me i want it to be from god yes. and how do we know like uh, this is really from god i i think uh, as we They read the Bible. We know the character of, of our God. You know if something is from God or not. Yeah. But uh, uh, bringing to practice, yeah. like uh, I, I think uh, this is the the moment that you that you take the risk or not. Like is it really from God or mm. it's from my head? Yes. Right. Yeah. I think the challenge with many people, it's not that God doesn't speak to them. I think the challenge is being able to distinguish yes. who is speaking. Is it God? Is it the enemy? Is it my mind? Yes. Or the pizza that I had last night? <laughs> so sometimes also. it's it's hard to distinguish yes. that voice. But the more we understand the character of the Father, yeah. that the Father's heart is to encourage, to affirm, and to build up. So for example, if you get a sense or an impression or a picture or a word, one of the things I always ask myself before I share that word with anyone, is this word going to encourage this person? Mm. Is this word going to build up this person? Is this word going to edify this person? And if Very not, good. then I keep it to myself. Because if a word brings judgment, You know, it mm -hmm. brings condemnation. That is not the heart of the Father. Mm -hmm. Is a loving Father who wants to minister to his kids yeah. in love, in honor, and in integrity. Yes. So this is a good question. Yes. Yeah. When you feel mm -hmm. that the Holy Spirit is uh, moving you, is telling uh, something for you to to say to someone, you should ask. Yeah. Is this world like uh, encouraging, uh, encouraging this, the or s bringing something good or yes. no? Yeah, and I think uh, this is a good question for us to to keep in our yeah. heads. Yeah. And but uh, if it's yes, you should go. You should go. <laughs> yeah. yeah. And Be definitely with that, I also does it also line up with the word of God? Mm -hmm. Does it line up with the nature and the character of God? Because yeah. God will not tell me to go and tell someone something that contradicts his word. Yes, yes. Because God never contradicts his word, all his character. The other thing I also wanted to say, you know, is like stepping out to someone, it's a risk. Mm -hmm. It's a big risk. But many people, even in my life, I was so afraid of making a mistake uh -huh. because I was a perfectionist. And I was like, what about if I get it wrong and they might be turned away from God? I think my fear kept me from walking in obedience. And also that fear also 
began to paralyze me mm-hmm. because I was so conscious of getting it wrong mm-hmm. versus being conscious of getting it right. So I had faith in getting it wrong than having faith in getting it right. Mm. Mm-hmm. Very good, okay, very good. And uh, can you can you share with us mm-hmm. some some prophetic word mm-hmm. that you received now in your life? How was it for you? You know, uh, there are certain prophetic words that God speaks to you that makes sense there and there. It's like it resonates in your heart. I remember one guy in 1997, he came to me and he says, I see you traveling to nations. You are going to preach and you're going to do all these things. And I looked at the guy like, <laughs> no I was way. like, I think you've got the wrong person. <laughs> I have not spoken for like I've not spoken for 19 years of my life and I think you've got the wrong address. <laughs> so in my heart I didn't say this to him but in my heart I was, like, I was like this guy's a false prophet, you know what I mean? <laughs> but then a year later the prophetic word began to come to pass. So there are words which God speak to you now which might not make sense there and there. You know, can you imagine Isaiah the prophet in the book of Isaiah chapter uh, 7 verse 14 he came to the house of Jess and said in this house there shall going to be a child born out of a virgin Mary and that was shocking news to anyone that word did not come to pass for almost 600 years and so there are certain things God might say to you that resonates well in your spirit but there are other things that he might say that might not make sense so we are sometimes quick to throw away the words which don't make sense like when the angel came to abra no like when the angel came to abraham and sarah and said you are going to have a child next yes. year when i come sarah began to laugh because why yeah. she was old she was like no this is weird he's crazy yeah maybe this angel should have came when i was 40 years you know what i mean old and then the problem that i tend to see with the prophetic is when we get a prophetic word we are either quick to reject it or we are sometimes quick to try and help god mm-hmm. abraham and sarah were very old And what they did was like Sarah said, honestly, I'm old, you are old. Let's help God. So he is my servant, her guy, have intimacy with her. And they try to help God. But the problem with that, they created a bigger problem. Yeah. And so I always say to people, when you get a prophetic word, don't try to help God. Wait for his timing and let God do it. And so there are some prophetic words sometimes that you get given and they might not and they take time for them to come to pass. Yeah. I always like to use this analogy in the prophetic. You know, it's like a Chinese uh bamboo farmer. He puts the seed in the ground and he waters it. And after a week, two weeks it doesn't germinate. Three weeks, four weeks, two months, five months it doesn't germinate. I don't know how many of us will continue watering that those seeds after five months, after eight months, after one year, after two years, after three years, after four years, only in the fourth year and a half to five years is when the Chinese bamboo seed wow. germinates. But when it germinates, what that bamboo seed does is it grows 27 meters in six weeks. Mm. It grows 27 meters in six weeks. So my question is, did that seed grow 27 meters in six weeks or did that seed grow 27 meters in four and a half years? So why am I saying this? When you get a prophetic word, what God also wants to do is build the character to bring that word to pass. Wow, that's awesome. Oh my god. And um uh, 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 uh we we heard a lot of uh, about uh, false prophets yeah. as well too. Yeah. Uh for our audience yes. maybe it, that uh, someone that is listening to mm. this episode maybe maybe God already told uh, 
you something that it didn't happen in your life already and you are uh, is it uh, false or is it true but it's not the time uh, yeah. I think we we get confused with this. Definitely. How do I know is it from God mm -hmm. uh, or no? Uh, I think you already said because yeah. if, if it's a good word, if it encourages you, mm -hmm. it's from God, so keep it. But uh, uh, I used to hear people saying to me, oh, God said me, to me when I was five years that I was blah, blah, blah. And, and here I am. So God is a liar. No. Yeah. And uh, what can you tell to them um, uh, to, to um, filter. Yes, I think there has to be a filter because I think the name of God, I, I try and encourage people, don't use God told me this, God told me that. Yeah. Just say, I sense, I have a thought, I have an impression. Perfect. Because sometimes when we sh use God told me this, you can manipulate someone. Yeah. Like men who go to women and say, God told me you are going to be my wife. Yeah. That's not romantic. No, no. That's not it's, the, it's a, it's a, no. I already heard this. Yeah. I was like, no. are you crazy? No. And that's actually <laughs> abuse. It's yeah. not romantic. A romantic is when a guy pursues a girl in love and honor. And then he says to the girl, I like you. Then the girl says, I like you, but I just see you as a brother. <laughs> you see what I mean? <laughs> All I like you, let's pursue this. Because the moment you say God told me, yes. you begin to manipulate so someone's will and control someone's will. Perfect. And that is not the nature of God. God never manipulates or control Perfect. anyone's will. So there has to be done in love or else people begin to you know, hurt people. And I've seen people that have been hurt by the prophetic because the way it was done was not loving. You know, all this prophetic stuff, it has to come out of love, humility, and the fear of God. If there's no love in it, it becomes very dangerous because mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 14 says, you know, um, you know, uh, pursue love, desire love, and then, of course, everything comes out of love. If the, there's no love, it becomes very dangerous. Very yeah. good yeah. what you said. God told me nah. that. You, uh, uh, no, no. It, it not, it's not like this. No, it's not like that because yeah. there has to be a... Because the moment someone says, God told me, you become fearful to question it if they are wrong versus if someone say honestly i'm sensing this i want to submit what i'm sensing to you guys to test it so there has to be accountability when someone says i'm a prophet i'm not accountable to anyone that is very very dangerous because yeah. every one of us yes we are accountable to god but we are accountable to also to one another perfect yeah very good and nowadays uh gava you have your school yes. of uh, prophecies right uh, yeah we run a minister like we run a caruso it's called caruso kingdom school our heart is to train people you know to grow in hearing god's voice and then you know we go out in the streets we love on people yeah. serve people encourage people because not many people come to church you know what I mean? Mm. But the prophetic is not just meant to be kept in the church. Yeah. It should be in the streets yes. and loving people well and serving people well. And uh, in, in your school, yeah. uh, does it have like a... Uh, uh, vacation courses or yeah like we like we run the school for about a month mm -hmm. and you know it's it's practical learning it's not just mm -hmm. you know information information we you need to practice we learn by doing everything you have to learn by practice and, and the more you practice the more you become better at it and there is some brazilians there i mean most of them are brazilians really? actually yeah, oh. no no i i love brazil i love i love this nation not because of your good aside or your good Brazilian <laughs> barbecue, but just the people of Brazil. It's like it's wherever you f find Brazilians, it's like the, there's a festival. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because God has given you, I mean, this nation with a gift of like you know of creativity, of celebration. You know how to celebrate, and so many of our students who come for the school are, are mostly Brazilians because. Yeah. 
our heart was to, when we used to run the school in Germany, we realized many people couldn't fly, you know, to Germany. So instead, we thought, okay, how about we fly to where the people are, and then we make the schools extremely, extremely cheap. Because our heart is never to make a business. Our heart is to be a blessing to people. Oh, that's nice. Thank you. And uh, uh, I was, as you were replying me, mm. I was thinking. I heard a lot of uh, of my my friends said, "Oh, God never gave a word from to me." Mm -hmm. Maybe you are one of this that I'm talking about. Oh, I've never heard. I've never had a prophecy. Uh, but I, I think one of the keys maybe is that you are in the, you are in the wrong places, right? Because, uh, like, a, as your school, mm. you go to to the street yeah. and to supermarket, uh, yeah. market. Mm. But uh, sometimes you should be in the right places as well to receive from God. Yeah. No? Yeah, I think our heart before the Lord has to be in a right place. If my heart attitude is in a place of wanting to hear, I can hear. I'll give you a story. It comes from the book of First Samuel, chapter 3, verse 1 to 10. Samuel, one of the best prophets in the Old Testament. Yeah. The Bible says every word that he said came to pass. I mean, that's how sharp he was. But when God called him in an audible voice, the first time he woke up, ran to Eli. Did you call me? No. Went back to sleep. God called him in an audible voice. Second time third time the fourth time and then th i think maybe it's god you know trying to say something so i like verse 9 it says so here's the key of positioning yourself the key is speak lord for your servant is listening most of the time we are always saying god you listen i'm the one who's speaking <laughs> so we do all the praying but we are never also in a place of listening we we learn languages by hearing not by speaking so revelation yeah. 2 7 and 11 it says he that is an ear to hear let him hear what the spirit says so may god fine tune our frequency to be able to hear the frequency of the holy spirit you might not feel like you've never received a prophetic word over your life but i just want to say to you your life is actually a prophetic word. Wow. wow. Your life is a prophetic word. Yeah, yeah. Amen. Amen. And tell me, Gava, when we have a um, moment here in our podcast called mm. Momento Metanoia. Okay. How can I call this moment in English Metanoia? Do you know it, this word metanoia in English? Moment. Metanoia moment. Met metanoia moment. Mm -hmm. metanoia moment. Yeah, yeah. And I ask for the um, for you to share with us like a uh, a moment uh, like the your one moment of your life that you got uh, experience with a god like crazy and uh, if you could share with us it would be amazing i think i know you have a lot of ones <laughs> I, i i can imagine but one that uh, really oh you never forget you know like you said i i definitely you have a lot i have a lot yeah but i am I would say of, uh, of my precious daughter, Gabriella. You know, Gabriella, she's now a teenager. She's 13 years old. When she was born, you know, after two weeks she was born, we woke up one morning as a, as a husband and a wife, and her whole body was yellow in complexion. And we did not know what it was. So what we did was we went with her to the doctor's, And they did a couple of tests and all that. But later on, around 3 p.m., one nurse, no, one doctor who was passing by realized something was wrong with this uh, girl. And she was not meant to be in that department, this doctor. And she says, can you rush this girl to the emergency room? As parents, we were confused. They rushed her to the emergency room. They put her on their arm, um, almost like on a table, an operating table. They stuck a big needle like this here in her back. And when they did that, I nearly, I nearly fainted. And 
then they did test and they said your daughter uh, Gabriella has meningitis and meningitis is almost like an inflammation to the brain oh, and yeah. so they began to prepare us for um, most likely that she might not be able to see able to hear able to do the natural things a child would do can you imagine hearing that as a parent your first child she's only two weeks old oh my god and for the first uh f three weeks or so she was um there had a lot of wires around her. i mean her body and her face was swollen her head was swollen and i remember the lord you know saying if i bring your child home would you trust me i was like what if i bring your child home would you trust me and in that moment i felt so helpless and i was like lord i love my child but i relinquished my right and said god you are good i don't understand your ways but your character is good i released my daughter in the hands of god i came out of the elevator and as i came out of the elevator i went into the room my wife was not there because she was not feeling well she was in a different room and they said can we speak to you the doctor said and i was like what's going on he says we don't know how to say this to you and i was expecting them to tell me that my child passed away but they said the numbers on the uh, on the monitor has begin to decrease and it's changing so we don't we don't want to come to a conclusion yet but we just want to say we'll keep monitoring and the numbers began to change and change and four days later Gabriella was released uh, from the emergency and why am i saying this i'm saying this to say even though death seemed to knock on her door god preserved her life and the funny thing about Gabriella is our 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 eldest child by the age of 2 years old she gave her heart to Jesus and at the age of 2 years old wow she would tell you mommy and daddy can you please leave the room i want to spend time with Jesus oh my god you have to be a secure father when your child tells you to leave a room <laughs> and she would spend about 45 minutes by herself worshiping and praising god and if the phone would ring at our house before you pick up the phone she would tell you who's calling oh my god did you hear that and she two and a half years old three years old she's in a daycare and the teacher saw that she was sad she had a bit of tears in her eyes the teachers asked her are you okay we see that you are sad and she says i'm okay can we do anything for you she said no i'll take my little bible in my bag read it and encourage myself in the lord 3 years old and it's not something you teach a child 5 years old i'm making breakfast for my family my wife likes to sleep in on a saturday and my kids like to get up so i made breakfast for my kids gabriela samuel did god speak to you through dreams and visions gabriela looked at me and said daddy dreams and visions they are for you as of me God speaks to me through uh, through angels and then she just continues eating because she found a scripture in the in the book of acts chapter 2 <laughs> 16 and 17 that says old men will dream dreams and she was like daddy i'm not an old man dreams are for you oh for my me, god <laughs> and god we are connected in a different way i have come with gabriela to brazil in rio you should see her doing deliverances in the streets of rio and that's just the sovereignty of god over her life why am i saying this i'm saying this to everyone who's watching god is a prophetic god and you are a prophetic son and a daughter never allow whatever the enemy intended for you to disarm you to limit you it's time to arise and shine for your light is come and the glory of god has risen upon this nation i love brazil i love brazilians and i just feel god's hand is upon this nation and god's hand is upon this generation it's time to Amen. walk in your prophetic destiny as an individual and as a nation wow
Wow. I want to know Gabriella. <laughs> You should. Yeah, yeah, I want to know her. Yeah. That's awesome to Thank hear. You. Thank you so much, no, Gava. such an honor. Such an honor I to feel, be here. Uh, I, I feel um, the Holy Spirit and yeah. I'm feeling so calm. Thank you. And uh, I don't know, like the... We can we can feel in the atm atmosphere. atmosphere. Yes. Yeah. And uh, I'm feeling I'm feeling the presence of God Thank in this you. place. I'm, I can feel the presence of God mm -hmm. as the love. Mm -hmm. uh, the The Word of God said you can you can have everything, but if you don't have love, that's right. You don't have nothing. And I can feel the love the in the way you speak. Thank I you. can feel the love. Um, so I'm so glad that we had this time. I'm so glad that our audience can experience thank and you. hear from you. Thank you. So thank you so much. I'm really honored and I hope to see you soon. Thank you. In your school. <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> Always welcome. Yeah, thank yeah. You. yeah. And God bless you so much. Thank bless you. your family, your ministry, whatever you go. Yeah. And I'm so glad. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Such an honor to meet you all. And Viva Jesus, Viva Brazil. Wow. So good. So good. Uh, I hope yeah. you like it. And um, uh, I'm going to... I'm gonna say goodbye to them in Portuguese. Okay. Galera, espero que vocês tenham gostado desse episódio. <risos> é, foi sensacional estar aqui com, com o Gava. Que momento especial. Tenho certeza que você recebeu muito de Deus. E compartilha com seus amigos. Compartilha com as pessoas que têm dúvida em relação ao profético. Olha a vida de, dele, sabe? Eu, eu imagino que vocês consigam sentir o que eu estou sentindo aqui. E esse é meu desejo. Então, espero que vocês também me desculpem as minhas falhas. Né? Somos humanos. Estamos aqui aprendendo. Eu preciso passar um tempinho lá na escola, né? Dá uma praticada. E é isso, gente. A gente se vê na terceira temporada. Então, esse foi um conteúdo extra pra você. Vai se aquecendo aí. Assiste de novo, porque tem muito conteúdo. Pesquisa na Bíblia. Vai dar uma estudada. E a gente se vê na terceira temporada. Um beijo. Fica com Deus. E até lá. Vai, Galá! Cheers. Cheers, all. <risos>